Apostle Dixon. I pray that all is well. I pray, pray, pray for everybody. Today is the second day. Praise God. Praise God. The first thing I want to tell you guys is that right now I'm in a lot of transition um, with my business and with the spices and things are going on. So there will not be a set time. I'm going to say that again. It will not be a set time that I get on here. But I promise you this, I am faithful to the cause. I will be on here. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, every day of the 40-day fast. So, and I'll be praying in between. Make sure that I hear from God and I give you what God said. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Go ahead and press tag and share. So, like I say, today is the second day of the fast. I pray that you are empowered. Come on, somebody. When you're talking about fast, we're not just talking about not eating. Come on, somebody. What we're talking about, I want to hear from God. I want to see God. I want the presence of God. I want to pray to God. I want to lay before God. Come on, somebody. I need some things broken off. I need some yokes broken off. I need some people saved. I need some people healed. I need some people delivered. I need some people just feeling the touch of God, the power of God. No, no, no. Come on, somebody. We need some real stuff in this hour. Don't give me your fancy talk, your fancy speech. Oh, I feel the power of God already and I ain't even started. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not, um, how could I say that? I'm not amused by intelligent speaking and, and good looking and all that. No, no, no. I just want Jesus. Have you been with God? Come on, somebody. Because we can tell who's been with God. Oh, let's be honest up in here today. We can tell if you've been with God. Have you spent time with God? What does he say? Hallelujah to his name. We got to get back to that. So let me go ahead and start off with our scripture. Okay, praise God. So the scripture that God gave me this morning, and he knows I got my Bible. The scripture that God gave me was Exodus. Exodus 34 and 28 and it said and he was there with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights he did neither eat bread nor drink water and he wrote up on the tables the words of the covenant the Ten Commandments and that was the word of God let me tell you something whenever God tells you to go on a fast there's something he's trying to birth he birthed in Moses the Ten Commandments and I'm gonna tell you all something I'm gonna talk about some hard stuff up in here today let me tell you something that we're not doing the absolute fast. The absolute fast, that's how you fast. Nothing. Now, I did it one time. Oh, I thought I was going to die. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I was young. I was about 27, 28. I don't remember. But um, I want to be like Jesus. So I did a 40 day and 40 day fast. And I almost died. <laughs> At least that's how I felt anyway, you know. And I tell you, we did do it. It was a group of us. And it, it was amazing. That was the only time I did it. All right. But I will say this that's a complete fast, though. Right now, and I said it yesterday, and I'm not trying to be cynical or anything of that matter. We, as a body of Christ, have gotten lazy. Come on, somebody. Y'all know it's true. Y'all remember back in the day when they used to have shut-ins, and they were well and pray all night long. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You don't hear me. I remember. Do you remember? Come on, somebody. We're not laboring. That's why we don't see the power. You wonder why revival is not here in the churches? Because the devil then came in and got everybody like the daisy. He then came in, and everybody's doing this new stuff. As a matter of fact, uh, I just want to warn some of you that's following me. I've been, <laughs> God said, go all the way out. What am I saying? I just kind of like been waiting for God to just give me the go ahead. I have a question and I'm, and I'm going to put some pictures up probably today or tomorrow. I don't, I don't know. What's up with all the godly women? Why are you exposing your breasts, your legs, your thighs? Yeah, I'm saying it like that. A real woman of God, we don't do that. We don't do that. Oh, come on, somebody. We don't do that. The power of the Holy Ghost will tell you, cover up. Don't, don't, don't make your brother sin. Come on, somebody. Don't make another woman sin these days. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this new church, but that's not God. Wearing tight dresses in the sanctuary. I went to somebody's church. I'm not going to say no name on here. I was confused. I thought I was in a club the way these young girls were. I mean, body, and ain't nobody hating. Go ahead with that foolishness. I told y'all yesterday, we judge the actions of everybody. You've been doing it your whole life. You still do it. You're going to do it till your day you die. Say whatever. It is a way that seemed right into men, but God says it's death, spiritual death, physical death. Young ladies, you don't have to dress like that to get some attention. Grown ladies. You need to stop dressing like that to get attention. Mature ladies, grandmas, grandma, grandma, I love you, grandma, but guess what? We don't want to see your breasts, grandma. I'm sorry, we don't want to see your breasts. No, 
I don't want to see mine. Not in the public. Let's get back integrity. Let's get back modest apparel. Teach these young women how to how to have class, poise. And y'all wonder why they're acting like, I don't even like saying the girl's name, but those people in Hollywood that like to shake and gyrate and all that. I don't know why God making me go here. Maybe because the body of Christ, you're so busy talking about the young women, competing with the young women. Why don't you teach the young women? Don't be jealous of them, but teach them. Y'all trying to compete. That's why y'all start doing that stuff. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. From California to Atlanta to here to it. I've seen it. The competition spirit that's in the churches. The Even the older men. Y'all want to sag. How you going to get 50 year old, 50 year old and you want to sag or be a rapper? Stop playing. Stop playing. Teach these young men and women how to dress, how to walk, how to talk, how to have integrity, pride about themselves. But y'all sitting up there trying to be young again. It's over, pops. It's over. You 60 and you still trying to rap. Literally. And I don't even know why God made me say all that, but it's the truth. All right. So what I'm talking about today, and I pray that again, when I'm teaching like this, I need you to go over this video again, because it's the spirit of God. I'm not that great. Trust me. So um, that was our foundation scripture. So now I'm going to tell you what God told me to talk about today. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah to his name. Okay. This is what God gave me today. He said the four key components of life. So the first one is vision. What you see. What you hear, because it is, oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Why do you think they call prophet seers? It's what you see in the spirit realm. It's your spiritual eyes open. Come on, somebody, because to be honest with you, a lot of your spiritual eyes not open. That's why you're getting hit. Uh, and what is a hit? You're going through unnecessary tests and trials, God said. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So the four key components of life is vision, emotions, temptation, and discipline. Now, vision in the Hebrew word, it says, in the Hebrew and Greek word, it says chasson. Isn't this sound like chasson? It's also can be said discipline. Emotions is key for, which also is um, actually close related to your heart. You, you notice the Bible says that the heart is the most deceitful thing. That's because most people make heart decisions and not godly decisions. Well, it feel right. My, my heart feel right. You don't even know what your heart said because God says it, it is the most deceitful thing. Come on, somebody. Temptation is makah in the Hebrew word. And that means choice or, or to be lured. When you're getting tempted, the enemy is saying, come, come, I got something you like. He, he dangled that carrot. Oh, he dangled that carrot. He, he know what you like. It's a job. It's a man. It's a woman. It's this. He know how to dangle it. And you be thinking it's God. I mean, he'll quote scripture. I mean, you be thinking it's God. If you don't go to God and, and everything, I'm very serious. You are supposed to test the spirit by everything that comes by you. Uh, um, Let me tell you something. Like I told you. There's a lot of opportunities that are coming my way um, because I'm a chef. And I'm going to be honest with you. That doesn't mean they're all great opportunities. Now, to the other person to be like, oh, girl, you got it going on. I'm going to test that thing by the power of God, by the spirit of God, because I know how the enemy does. Oh, he did that with Disney. Let me tell you something. Everybody thought that was the best job. And I ain't going to lie. It had its benefits. Being a chef at Disney, I mean, they treat you A1. I'm talking about... They gave me a card. I can go get um, uniforms, um, the top not shoes, all kind of stuff. But when I say, and I'm going to put it out there, I went through hell on that job. And one day I just was like, God, I went in the bathroom and cry. I'm being transparent. Hallelujah. I've never said this story, not this part, only to close friends. I'm telling you. I went in the bathroom and I cried. I said, God, this cannot be you. He said, no, it's not, Deanna. He said, but because it was your permissive will and I love you and you begged me for it and I did. Oh, come on, somebody. You need transparent in this hour. He said, I allowed it. He said, now what you want to do? I said, God, if this is not you, give me the strength to leave. Because some of you, you get stuck because you didn't already told people, it must be God. It must be God. It must be God. And now you stuck because you lied on God. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm talking. I'm preaching. I'm teaching. I'm not ashamed to say I, I, I wanted this and it wasn't God. Because people, oh, I'm about to go here. What I've learned in teaching and preaching and being an apostle is that the enemy will try to distract you. 
People try to, well, you know, if you're so great, then how come you not, you don't have this or you don't have that? And so you get a, 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 a rut to trying to please people so you can live up to the financial. Oh, y'all know where I'm going with this. Y'all understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. And all the while it's emotions. So when I pull that thing in and I realize, I say, wait a minute. You took me out of the system when I left Comcast. Why would you put me back in the system? I say, I'm saying something. Hallelujah. In this last hour, I need y'all to hear me. I need you to hear me. I feel the power of God. God is taking his people out of a Pharaoh system. What is a Pharaoh system? And you know what? I may break that thing down for you tomorrow. There's a difference between a job and your work. God gave you a work to do. God never gave you a job. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm talking here. God give you a work to do, an assignment. And I promise you, the closer you get to God, your work and your job, they're going to collide. And you got to choose. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We talked about that yesterday. Your assignment on earth. So, vision, you got to understand about vision and emotions and temptation. So, I'm going to talk to them one at a time. Break that thing down. Vision is Samson and Delilah. Samson knew what he was supposed to do. But he looked upon the beauty of a, of Delilah. And he knew he wasn't supposed to go through a strange woman. But Delilah had him. But I, I searched that scripture because that was my first sermon, Samson and Delilah. And I noticed that she, he kept telling her, I love you, I love you. Not once in scripture did she say, I love you back. Mm. And I'm going I'm to I'm dissect this thing all the way down. Not only that, she kept asking him, what is your secret? What is your secret? Don't you know the enemy? Wants to steal what you see and what God showed you. Because you must see yourself as God sees you. So God going to show you a little at a time. He ain't going to show you everything. Because then you be trying to manipulate and make things happen. Which is witchcraft. So he was showing Samson from birth. Actually he said you're a Nazarene. Don't let a razor come to your head. He wasn't supposed to tell Delilah his secrets. You see the devil can't. He, he can't talk about the future. He can only tell you your past. That's where psychics and mediums, all they come in and they be right, right? Because some of you have done it. You know you have, yes. And some of you still doing that. I got to know what God says. Instead of getting close to God, you go to witches and warlocks. All right, Saul. So anyway, notice what she did. She, she coerced him into telling. Only because his vision got blurred. People of God, you got to watch your vision. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not just talking about the two eyes vision. I'm not talking about the four eye vision. I'm talking about the spiritual vision. Because the enemy, it wants to taint your vision. That's why you have to be careful what you, what you, your portals. Come on, somebody. These are portals. These are gates. You got to watch what you see, what you hear, what you think, what you taste, what you smell, who you have sex with. Yeah, I say it. That's a portal too. That's why some of you are confused now. Hallelujah. Soul ties. You wonder why you with somebody you don't even want to be with. Quit having sex with them and, and you might break that tie. Or you will break that tie in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Oh, oh, I know I'm talking right. Hallelujah. So vision is very important. That's the first thing the enemy is after, your vision. And then he'll try to tell you you're not who God called you to be. And God will allow him to attack you. Your body, your finances, your job, your house, your family, which I rebuke in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But he will allow it so you can be tested because you will be tested. Every gift that God has given you, you will be tested in that gift to see if you're worthy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I can't clap with this pen. Now I got it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You will be tested in that area. Because God want to know, can I trust you with my people? Can I trust you with the gift? Because somebody pimping his gift. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I see him up on here trying to, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going here. Oh, I feel the power of God. There are some men and women that be on here. They look very good. And they have the gift of gab. And I see what they're doing. Y'all don't even see what they're doing. They, they drawing people. They drawing people. And if you really listen to them, I'm not saying they don't preach good. Because any, the devil knows how to preach and teach. And he knows the Bible. But it's not biblical application. It's not the spirit of God. That's why you have to guard your hearts, your spirit. Because the enemy is after your vision, what you see, what you know. Come on, somebody. More so your spiritual sight. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So he'll try to taint your vision. God said these are the full components. That, that's how people fall. Preachers. They start looking in the congregation at the women that dress half naked. You know what I'm saying? Vision. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 
guard your vision, guard your sight. And it's a difference between vision and sight. Sight is what you see. Vision is what you know. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah to his name. The second one is emotions. You know, David and Bathsheba, that's how that happened. First of all, David was supposed to be at war. So David had let his own heart rule him. Uh, you know, I'm King David. I don't have to be at war. Every time you get out of position, your emotions will pull you somewhere where you're not supposed to be. We have to learn how to stay in position as men and women of God. Y'all don't understand. That's why men and women are falling. I'm talking about they're doing all kinds of stuff. You, you, you're reading on Facebook the news. They're in a sex ring. They didn't did this. There was something that drew them. James said that you are drawn by your own lust. That's why God said examine yourself. I'm, I'm not going to just tell you what the problem. I'm going to tell you how to solve the problem. Everybody have got beside themselves. When you know. That you're doing something you ain't got no business doing. Or you start thinking crazy. Or thinking, thinking like they call it. You need to repent and ask God, God, I didn't let something in. God, help me. God, pull me back. Because you can't do this by yourself. This is a spiritual war. Hallelujah. And y'all wonder how people get out there. Because they are not guarding their heart, their mind, their soul, their emotions. And emotions is part of the heart, which is flesh. That's why you have to be spiritual. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. When you walk in the spirit, talk in the spirit, move in the spirit, you'll run through anybody and anything. Yeah, I said it. Because when you've been with God, you can stand against anything and anybody. But when you stop doing that, that's when the enemy come in. And he come in like a flood. Come on, somebody. He'll play you his chess. It ain't checkers, baby. Hallelujah. You got to understand what's going on. You got to be strong in this hour. Most people are falling because they start off with God. Oh, come on, somebody. They start off with God. You start loving God. You're reading your book. You're telling everybody that you're with God. And all of a sudden, the enemy say, hmm. And God say, have you considered my servant and calls out your name? That's when you're going to be tested. That's when we're going to find out what you're really made of. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because two things going to happen. Either you're going to go through that test, that trial, that tribulation, even with tears in your eyes. Hallelujah. Or you're going to fall by the wayside and say, I repent, God. Help me, I've fallen, and I can't get up. Because you can only do it by the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's why God says, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you cannot hear the truth. That's why people don't like sound doctrine anymore. We got a total Sodom and Gomorrah to the 10th power on our hands, even in the church. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all know it's true. Let's talk about that. And, and, and let's get back to David and Bathsheba. David was so out of it. He didn't even know what he was doing. He actually had her husband killed just to help her. And then when Nathan came to him and gave him a parable, look, I love the way God do things. He said, give him a parable because he wanted him to see himself. God will allow you to go through so much so you can see you. Hallelujah. You don't hear what I'm just saying. So when Nathan told him, he said, the whole situation of the matter, and, he, and David said, that man should be killed. And Nathan calmly said, that man is you. Some of you are in error and you don't want nobody to tell you nothing. God may not send a parable. God may send a hard hit. What is a hard hit? A rebuke, correction. I'm telling you right now, it is better for you to correct yourself than when God correct you. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Emotions. And tr truth be told, when you start getting to be a mature Christian, you got to learn to pull that thing in. If any of you have been following me since I first got on here, and, and I don't mind saying it, I, I don't know. I've always been prophetic. Now, we all know that's true, whether you believe it or not. But I was a little immature when I first started on here. I was saying, I, I ain't going to lie, I was tripping. And God had to say, Deanna, what you doing? God had to pull my coattail because I wasn't seasoned like I am now. You have to be able to listen to people. And it was a couple of people, even famous people, you contacted me. You think it's a you, sister. I know you're anointed. But try doing it this way. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm just being honest and transparent. Some of you, it doesn't matter how old you get. You can always learn. We're always growing, always knowing, always showing. You can learn from a baby. But you have to have your spirit open. Some of you don't want to learn anything. And you're going around and around like the children of Israel. And you're wondering why. I'm going to tell you three reasons why. Number one, you don't want nobody to tell you nothing. Number two, you think you know it all. Number three, you're really not as grown as you think. You're not a mature in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because when you get mature in the spirit, you realize, I need God and I need help. 
We are all connected. That's why he says the five-fold ministry. Notice it's, it's connect on the hand. All right? You understand what I'm saying? We're trying to operate without each other, knowing that God has put us all together. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's why the church is in disarray. But God is bringing back the remnant. The remnant going to stick together. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they are already out there, and you know what they do. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah, you hear what I'm saying. So let's talk about the third key point, temptation. Oh, we can talk about this one all day long. As long as you live, you will be tempted. And you will be tempted what you used to do, what you're doing now, and what the devil wants you to do. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You don't hear what I just said. The devil have been studying you your whole life. I was wondering, and I will continue to tell parts of my testimony. When I was 12 years old, I was molested. And I was wondering. I asked God. I said, God, why? Why did you allow that to happen? God said, Deanna, the devil knew who you were. You remember we talked about yesterday about the spirit? The enemy have been with God. He used to be, he was the choir director. So he knows the anointing. Some of you have been through some things as a child. And you was wondering why. Because he knew who you were. He knew your spirit. He knew who you will become. You don't hear what I'm saying. Remember, he was with God. So he knows the spirit of God, the true authentic. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So he's been watching you your whole life. He knows what you like. He knows how you like it. He knows who you like. And y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's why every spirit must be tested. God say, test the spirit by the spirit. You know when something is not of God. But I'm going to be honest with you. You know what we do sometimes? And I used to do it too. God, if it ain't you, can you make it you? Mm -hmm. Y'all know it's the truth. That flesh get weak, don't it? I mean, it'll make you want to do some things. Hallelujah. And yet you saved. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to put it in perspective. Everybody talk about Adam and Eve. I won't talk about us. We're tempted every day. It could be a man. It could be a woman. It could be a job. It could be this. It could be that. It could be lying. It could be whatever the case may be that turns it against God. Because if it does not line up with the word of God being biblical sound, it is not of God. And yet there are some people, well, you know, uh, I'm going to tell a little white lie. A lie is a lie all day long. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So this temptation, the enemy uses this the most out of every component that I've just said. He will tempt you even to cuss somebody out, even to say something. That's why as you get seasoned, God will tell you, be quiet. I'm going to handle that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. As you get mature, God will say, I, I pray about it. You don't hear what I'm saying. That's when you know seasoned and unseasoned people. And hold on. I don't care if you have a doctorate. You have a church. I see some. I'm talking about just unmature spirits. They could preach. They could know the word. But if you go to them, they don't know how to talk to you. They don't know how to act. All of that is it falls into temptation. You don't get to mistreat each other just because you are above or you think you're above somebody. Pastors, preachers, teachers, apostles. You don't get to do that. That's your brother and your sister. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So we're talking about temptation now. Hallelujah. The fourth component is discipline. Oh, that's a, that's, that, that's a heavy one right there. That's a heavy one. Let's just be real. The body of Christ, we need to learn more temptation. Everything could be a sin. Eating too much. Drinking too much. Playing too much. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Discipline. A real leader, a real child of God, if you got something to do, you do it. You prepare. Let's talk about this. You know why road rage is today? Because people have stopped being disciplined. If you know you got to be to work at five, then you probably should leave at four, right? It all depends on the time. Now, back in the day, people, you, hey, look, I got to be to work. They leave at 3.30 sometimes. Now, you're leaving 4.30 and knowing you got to get to work at five. So, now you're rushing, shh, 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 tripping, getting mad at somebody else because you when discipline to get up. Oh, come on, somebody. Discipline. God said, read your word. I'm going to read. You lay in the bed and read it. Now you're falling asleep. Talking about, oh, you know, every time I read the Bible, I get sleepy. Y'all be making me laugh with that one. Well, get up. Go to the kitchen table somewhere where you're standing. Posture your body so that you can do what you're supposed to do. Christians got more excuses than I've ever heard in my whole life these days. <laughs> Y'all ain't read it for me. Y'all ain't read it for me. Discipline. If you really want to succeed in life, success, 
by God's standard, not the world. You're going to have to be disciplined because God is going to require you that you walk in excellence. In every area of your life. He didn't say perfect. He said in excellence. If you're going to do it for God, then do it right. Hallelujah. We don't have enough discipline. Discipline to pray. Discipline to fast. Most people, and I'm not trying to be funny. Okay, I'm just being real. You'll start off good the first week of fast. Then after they'll be like, well, you know, I tried. You already had it in your mind you was going to eat. So why don't you stop playing? You have to learn, do I really want that power of God? You want to know why people are anointed the way they are anointed? And I'm going to use myself. I remember when I was in Bible college, I would sit to that table and I was working two jobs. I would sit to that table three or four hours in that Bible, in that Bible. They called me crazy. Oh, what they didn't call me. But I knew what I was doing. I said, in order to do and to be what God have called me to be, I need to know that word up and down, up and down, up and down. Not only that, I got into the strong um, concordance. I got into the he- Hebrew word. I got into the Greek word. I, I, I. I was just, and I wanted to know, God feed me, God feed me, God feed me so I could feed your people. A lot of people that are pastoring churches, they have a doctorate, they have this and don't know the word. Better yet, let's go deeper. You should want God more than anything in this world. The more time you spend with God, the spirit will get on you to where you just want God. God, now, now, now we got to live. Don't get, don't get it twisted. You got to do whatever you got to do. But your first thing should be my relationship with God. If I got to spend two hours in his presence. Everybody wants the power, but nobody want to, and I'll it, but they don't want to do what it takes. It took me years to get here. And that's why I don't play with nobody. And a lot of people think, oh, she hard. I'm going to tell you, what it costs me to get here, if you think I'm going to let somebody come and take it from me or try to mislead me, the devil is a lie. That's the same tenacity you should have. God is trusting you. There are some of you that are called right now and you into something that you ain't supposed to even be in. Well, I, I, I'm waiting on God. No, God waiting on you to stop playing and to get it together and to make a firm decision. You're going to be with God or you're not. Because some of you just straddling the fence. Or better yet, you are sitting on the fence. Don't know what you want to do. You want to be saved? I don't. Or better yet, you go by your emotions. Well, you know, I just don't feel like it today. Or better yet, oh, I'm going here. I don't know why God is the body of Christ. Oh, my God. We're in trouble. I'm going to tell you what God wants me to talk about right now. Whoo, God, that's deep. The spirit of lust. It's so much. I see it in the church. They're wearing shades. They're looking at each other like they want to have sex sooner. Oh, y'all know what I'm saying is true. Lusting, even on Facebook. Women of God showing their body. You ain't supposed to show none of this. I don't care how saved you are. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of looking at y'all, truth be told. And then you talk about hallelujah. No, you need to go get high and hallelujah. Get it together. You wonder why the kid's tripping. That's because the adult's tripping. Yeah, I say it like that. We got to come back to God. Quit playing with God. And then when God do something, you want to cry. You should have been crying when you knew that you made the decision that you made. We all know right from wrong. All of us. Choose wisely, said the Lord. Quit playing with God. Because I promise you this. We all get it. I don't care what decision you make. Sooner or later, you will be exposed. Sooner or later, you're going to get paid back for whatever seeds that you sow. Be careful what you sow. Be careful what you do. Be careful what you say. Be mindful of who you hang with. Because everybody's not your friend. Some people trying to set you up. I'm going here. I don't know why God got me going here. Somebody pulling on my spirit. The reason why I don't befriend everybody. I used to do that. I, I, I'm, I'm serious. Let me tell you how I first really started this ministry the way God wanted me. I want to be like Jesus. I said, God, I want to be like you, Jesus. I want to have friends and I want to love everybody. And I found that everybody didn't love me. That they were really trying to get me to sin. Mm, I'm going somewhere. This is for somebody. You hanging out with some. I'm telling you what God say. I could almost call your name, but God don't want me to call your name. You hanging with these people. They don't even like you. But they're trying to get you to sin. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Have you ever been around people that know you're anointed and they're not as anointed as you? Mm. So, so if they can get you tainted, then you'll be just like them. You have to understand the anointing that's on your life requires you to come higher and higher and higher. I'm not saying arrogant. That is not of God. But honey, it requires discipline. 
I can't go where y'all go. I can't do what y'all do. I can't say what you say. And if I do, I get convicted. I'm talking about on a level. Let me, I'm going here. I'm going here. I'm going here. There was a prophetess when I was in California. I'm not going to say her name because I would never want to hurt her like this. But I respected her and I still do. So I went to her house one day and she broke up a bottle of wine. And I looked, my eyes got big. Y'all know my eyes big. And she said, Deanna, don't tell nobody. But I'm looking, I'm like, but aren't we prophetess? We're not supposed to. And I'm going to keep it honest because I don't lie about nothing. And so I said, we could do this. I was young in the ministry. She said, yeah. So, you know, I drank some wine too. I got home. God, God convicted me like I would. He said, you should have rebuked her. I said, but she's, she's older than me. She's my teacher at the Bible college. And God was like, you should have rebuked her. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. He said, that's not what we do, Deanna. Listen to what I'm saying. You don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's mimicking you. You don't know who's looking up to you. So when you do something, you ain't got no business. Now they're looking at you like, are you who you say you are? <laughs> Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready for me. People are always watching. People are always watching. That's one of the reasons I am who I am. Oh, I used to play. I told y'all that. If anybody followed me, yes, I was playing at one time. But when I started seeing how serious this is, that this is lives, this is spirits, and people need the truth, and people need somebody that's real and authentic, not lying to them. Yes, we make mistakes. Don't get it twisted. You will start to come up and be who God have called you to be. And you realize that this is real. And this is death to the person that plays. A spiritual death and a physical death. Y'all wonder why some people just dying all of a sudden? Don't play with me. Y'all know I can name names and y'all get mad. It's not glorifying. It's not like, oh, that's good for them. You haven't learned that God will backlash you publicly in front of everybody? It's just time to come back home, do the right things. And if, and if you've missed it, just you ain't got to tell the whole world because you know they're waiting on it. God, I repent. Teach me how to do this thing. Teach me how to walk this thing. Teach me how to be real with me. How are you going to preach to others when you are not right? And we have so many people on Facebook, and yes, they have their own churches. Oh, I knew he was going to make me say it. I see you, and I'm not trying to put down nobody. I see you fornicating behind closed doors. I see what you're doing. Don't you know God going to get you sooner or later, man of God, woman of God? If I was you, I would repent and say, God, keep me. I repent, Lord. Because, see, he'll give you a chance to repent privately. But if you don't, he'll expose you publicly. Somebody write that in the comments. He will give you a chance. God will give you a chance to get that thing right privately. Because let, let's be real. Come on. Let, let's be real here. Everybody in this Bible sin. But you notice, after they got publicly humiliated or something, they never sinned again. After David with Bathsheba, he never sinned again. Think about it. That's how God wrote. God will let you hang your own self, Judas. Y'all, come on somebody, hallelujah. You got to be real. And I'm not saying perfect, but just real. And when you fall down, tell the truth. Don't lie. Some of you be lying. I ain't never did nothing. Okay, whatever. We saw when you lied the first time. Heard when you lied the first time. Come on, somebody. So what I want to do is I want to um, do some affirmations over you before I close this. Okay. And I got to, actually I'm going to get on here um, later on because I have to I have to share something with you. Um, <laughs> I made a decision and I'm praying. I know it's the right decision. I just didn't know it was going to come so soon and quickly. But I guess I don't play. I, I, I just have a standard, you guys. And some people think I'm hard, and sometimes I am. I'll be very honest, but I cannot help it. God is a God of order. And listen, this is in every area of your life, even on a job. If it's no order, I can't deal. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to talk about nobody. I can't do it. All right, so I want to actually go ahead and I want to decree and declare these things over you. I break all assignments of the enemy against your finances in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of poverty, lack, and debt, and failure in the name of Jesus. 
God says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. I rebuke out all spirits of the kink worm, palmer worm, caterpillar, and locust that would eat up your blessings in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, teach them how to profit and lead them in the way they should go in the right way, God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are their provider. You are El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. Wealth and riches are in your house, and you fear God greatly and his commandments. Hallelujah to his name. The blessing of the Lord be upon your life and make you rich. Hallelujah. You are God's servant and take pleasure in his prosperity. Hallelujah. He says that God says that I, I meditate. We meditate on his word day and night in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let me tell you something, people. God, I hear you, God. I hear you, I hear you. God is drawing people back to himself. The church has gotten away from God, gotten chasing money, things, people, positions, attention. God said, will you just love him again? He said, will you just love him again? Hallelujah to his name. He said, will you just love him again? Just love him. Let me tell you something. If you just come back to the oracles of God, God will lead you in the way you should go, what you should do, what you should say. Now, here's the catch. You know what people get messed up? It's his timing. It's not your timing. So this is all I have for you today. This is day two. I pray that you stay strong in the Lord. Stay strong. And look, pray, pray, pray. Keep on your fast. Try not to break your fast. You know, and even and if you do, don't get heartened, disheartened about it. But give God your very best. That's all God wants. You give it to that job. You give it to that man. You give it to that woman. You give it to everybody else. Can we give God our best? Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. I love you through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Like I said, I'm going to get back up in here because I got some news for y'all. And um, yeah, you're going to find out what I'm talking about in a moment. So this is Apostle Deanna Dixon, Real Lot Soldiers, for that is who we are. God bless.